Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, welcome to a show where I have less hair than usual. <laughs> I know some of you are going to be surprised by this, but I just want to ease your nerves and let you know that I'm the same person. It's the same person. <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to do a, a coding Q&A today um, where you can ask questions. And I will do my best to provide answers. <laughs> Where's the hair? Um, if you go to Vox, that's vox.coding.garden, um, you can see questions that have been asked in the past. And you can see there are some chat commands that you can run to ask questions yourself. Oh, thank you, Alka. <laughs> Thanks for being here. It's been a while. I've, it's, I need to stream more often. Um, I, just, I just have way too many conflicting work meetings, and I can't find the... I can't find the time to stream. I don't know. I've seen more haircuts on CJ than any other person in my life. <laughs> well, thank you, chat. <laughs> Much appreciated. Uh, but yeah, if you go here, you can ask questions. Well, I mean, you can ask questions in the chat, but this shows you how to do it. And hey, Danif. Good day, CJ son. Thank you very much for that uh, five month resub. That was great. I think Streamlabs is broken right now. It just says. It doesn't put it doesn't put the user's name. It just says just subscribe with <laughs> you. Um, cool and uh, yeah, lots of support events this morning. Thank you to Jance 182 for that five month resub. Thank you to Alka for that seven month resub. Woo! I think Alka is almost the oldest subscriber. There's one person that's a wait no Alka is the oldest subscriber. I think there might have been someone who subbed like right before Alka did. I don't know. Uh, ACs, thank you for that four month resub. When are you going to be back streaming more? I would have hoped next week. Here's the thing. I'm working on four different projects at work right now. I'm trying to divide my time between all of them. And um, it's I'm just really busy and really exhausted by the end of the day. So I don't or even by the end of the day, the morning I, and I don't have time to stream. So I don't know. And uh, thank you to Hidane for that two month Twitch Prime resub, Dan Neef with that five month Twitch Prime resub, Alka with the seven months and Sledge Dog with that five month resub. Thank you very much. And ACs, thank you for the 100 bits. Frozen sprays. What the heck happened to the hair? Uh, I cut it off. I I took some shears. I put a number five guard on it, and I just went over my entire head. <laughs> um, yeah. I've I've So I've been doing the coding garden for a while now, and I've realized that whenever I change something, it, it kind of it shocks people. Um, it feels similar to, like, kids who watch a kids show and if they're if like the host of the kids i know i realize this is not a kids show but if the host of the kids show changes something like uh, kids freak out like if they grow a beard or uh yeah anything like that i don't know it's a similar similar idea here on the Cody garden <laughs> everyone's shocked <laughs> what's up mr demon wolf welcome welcome awesome um cool let's uh let's all let's play the drop game hey what's up one portuguese farm <laughs> Why am I not on top of science and tech? <laughs> Wait, what, uh, are you a streamer? I don't know if I've uh, I don't know if I've seen your stream. I so here's the thing. Not only am I not streaming as often. Oh, 24/7 farm animals. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but not only am I not streaming as often, I don't have as much time to watch Twitch. I used to watch other people's streams and like peruse uh, categories and stuff like that. <sighs> yeah. That's great. I don't know if I've seen your channel. I've seen the I've seen the uh, the chickens. I've seen there are turtles at one point. <laughs> I guess yours is uh, just plain old. Let's let's check it out. Let's see what what kind of farm animals you got going on. Oh, that's unfortunate, Mister Demon Wolf. Hopefully, it's not um, COVID. <laughs> but hopefully, you feel better. Um, cool. You got some chickens. I just see three chickens. I wonder if you got any other animals. Pigs. Cool. 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 <laughs> no. No. No worries. One Portuguese farm. Uh, thanks for dropping in. Okay. Um, everyone that's here, please join me in playing the drop game. You're you're already doing it. Exclamation mark. Drop me. That will drop your avatar from the sky. There's my avatar. Doesn't look like it's gonna land, but if it lands in the coding garden, you'll get your name on the screen for a little bit. Uh, oh, good drop. Who is that? Uh, Daya, great work, and shot in the dark, almost dead center. Great, great work. 
and there's a teeny, teeny tiny seedling. I can't read the name. <laughs> Have I heard of Ruby? Is it worth it? Ruby's fine. Uh, Ruby on Rails is like a very full-featured uh, back-end web framework um, in that it has a lot of opinions. You can do a lot with a little, but yeah. Look at all those drops. I am great drop. Frozen Spray, Husai, or Hussy, Cyber Eye. Great drops, everyone. Great drops. Okay, uh, next thing. Hello, <laughs> Fantasy Teapot. Good morning. Uh, the next thing is you can see in my chat overlay, um, some people have their pronouns set. So Fantasy Teapot has his pronouns set as he, him, his. Uh, Mark Darkside has yo's pronouns set as yo. Um, uh, Timon and uh, Rabelin both have he, him, his. Uh, you can set yours. So if you do exclamation mark, what pronouns? What pronouns? Um... There's a list. You have the option of she, he, zay, they, ko, nun, zay, hi, it, em, one, em, or yo. And uh, you can choose from one of those and then type exclamation mark pronoun followed by your preferred pronoun. And then all of your chat messages will have your pronouns. So it'll help me out uh, in knowing what you prefer. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Green David says they landed a junior dev job. Nice. Nice. Very good. Very good. Um, what else? You can also set your badges. You can see that some messages here have a country flag and then also have a, a team there. Um, there's info on that, but I'll tell you how it works. If you type exclamation mark country, uh, followed by your two character country code. It has to be the two character. Chance with the gifted subs. Thank you very much. Congrats to Snapshot and Coding with Fun and Solid Fuel and I'm Lingwing and Jetboot. Thank you very much, Chance. You're too kind, too kind. Uh, but yeah, if you set your country, just like that, um, it'll put your country flag. And and what's up, uh, Shebza? You can see that Shebza has the Sweden flag. Very good. Oh, Julian with the 50 bits. Thank you very much, Julian. <laughs> um, and then also, what else? Uh, you can set your team badge. Um, and so if you go to this page, which is the Font Awesome Brand Cheat Sheet, you can pick any name from this page and set it as your team badge. Um, Let's see what we're going to be today. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I miss my green hair, too. The tricky part is, to get my hair green, I had to bleach it, and that just it just killed it. it my, my hair was dead and fried. I'm going to go with, the, I'm gonna go with the, uh, the Docker team. So pick a name from this page, and then in the chat, you can do exclamation mark team, followed by that, and uh, it should set it. There it is. I have the Docker team. Great. Yeah, yeah. And Silex has the France flag. Very good. And Depopom with the India flag, the Node.js logo, and a status that says completing school projects while chilling. <laughs> uh, and I'll show you how you can set your status. So um, in the chat, if you type exclamation mark set status, make sure it's set status. You can say, uh, put your status like um, answering cues with A's. <laughs> Something like that? I don't know. Um, but make sure that your status is uh, safe for work. It is appropriate. Because if it's not, you will be timed out or banned. Uh, but if you do that, it'll show a nice little nice little status in it below all of your messages. And I think I think that's the long and long and short of it. <laughs> is that the right saying? That's how things work here at the coding garden. <laughs> No, this isn't this isn't merch, but you can get it at six dollars shirts dot com. Uh, dollar. What's my status? It's no longer my birthday. Very good, Elka. Um, this website, if you're looking for cheap t shirts, is awesome. And if you search for flowers, um, you'll find the one that I'm wearing right now. Hey, uh, Shwayno Mac. <laughs> Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Um. Yeah, check out those t-shirts there. You can get, what is it, uh, six t-shirts for $50 or something like that? I don't know. Hey, Koozie with that tier two sub. Everything's gonna be all right. Thank you, Koozie. I'm feeling pretty good today. I have to admit, I'm feeling pretty good. But I appreciate your reminder that everything's gonna be all right. And you watching at home, just remember, everything's gonna be all right. Nothing matters. Everything's temporary. <laughs> all right. Um, what do we do now? Uh, we say hi to everybody. That's what we do. Let's say hi. Uh, so if you would like me to say hi to you, you can say the following things. You can say hi, 
Hello, hey, morning, afternoon, evening, howdy, good day, coding hi -o, fo hi -o, or boga hey. Um, this is, if you're a programmer, you can see this is a regular expression. We have a word boundary followed by a matching group of uh, ors, different things that it'll match, followed by a word boundary. So if your message matches this regular expression, um, I'll say hi to you. This is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. Well, thank you, uh, the Let's Failer who says my hair looks dope. I appreciate it. It's a bit easier to maintain. Uh, and Shebza, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, uh, I can just splash some water on it and it's done. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done. <laughs> well, thank you, Chad. All right, we're going back in time. We're going back in time to uh, 20 minutes ago. And hey, Clarkio! Thank you very much for that four month resub. Shout out to Clarkio who will probably be streaming today. Dude, where's my car? <laughs> uh, check him out, he's a member of our Live Coders team. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, we're going back in time to 20 minutes ago to say hello to Samskio. Hello, thanks for being here. Uh, what's up, Imbosman and uh, Nazgul and DevTerp and Slake and The Jive. How's it going? What's up, it, uh, it's Maska and Eco Music and Chrisum and Brevlid. Brevel, Breveled? Breveled. And Ice Cream Tango, hello. What's up, Battle Fame? And Hat. And Danielle and Rulan and Amr and Overdose of Sadness and Nafto and Drop Time Bot and GM Awesome. Hello, hello. What's up, F Society? He says, Miss your streams. I miss my streams too. Um, that's, that's that's all I can say about that. Uh, what's up, Devil Bomb? Just a thing. I had plugged my headphones to my phone and my system volume was low and I thought, why the stream with no music today and no one is saying anything? <laughs> Turn up your sound. It's a reminder for everyone watching, turn up your sound. Uh, what's up, Shines Love and Vasima and Cordy and Two Fox and Colloquial Al and Proxen and King Rapula and Dakrai and Brayson who says, just a question, what's your favorite meal? Have a great day. I have thought about this a lot, <laughs> mainly because uh, in uh, quarantine and in, yeah, so, and thank you, Shwain Mac for the 100 bits. Um, but having to cook a lot of my own meals, um, I tried to buy foods that satisfy me because most of the time the reason i eat go out to eat or eat fast food is because it just tastes better <laughs> it's it's better food and it's also convenient but i'm trying to think what foods do i have um it's hard to say i i i really really like a chick-fil-a chicken sandwich I, can't, I don't know if it's my favorite meal, but I could pretty much eat that any time and be satisfied. Um, what else? I really like fried rice. I don't know. I can't, I can't, can't answer that. I don't know what my favorite meal is, but I do like that. I, do, I like Mexican food, too. I like some enchiladas. Well, I mean, it's like Tex-Mex. Tex yeah. But yeah, <laughs> what's up, uh, uh, Vicus? Took a month break from coding and now you're back. Well, that's good. Glad to see you back. What's up, Immer Gaming and Katoli and Bimsicle and Feistrand? Boga, hey, thanks for being here. What's up, uh, Timon? Hello, hello. And Mr. Happy and Shorty B and Doc. What's up, Doc? And Alka, who says, hi, short hair CJ. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you, username unknown, who says, loving the new hair. What's up, uh, Vivram and Turtle Monkey and George? Hello, CJ, or whoever you are. <laughs> It's me, I swear, it's me. What's up, Musha? And the Shivas! I feel, I don't think I saw you last time. Maybe I did see you last time, but thanks for being here. Hello, hello. And uh, Pablo Pang with that Twitch Prime resub. Thank you very much. Coding Hayo. Hello, hello. And hello, Call Me Trumpy. And Carol and Cheo. Long time no see. I agree. And hello, Mark and Alan Povita and Husi and Mr. Demon Wolf and Nico Scouse and Julian and Crazy Alex and I'm Linguin and Abin says, I'm kind of new here. What's the drop thing? Well, I'll tell you. Um, you I might have already showed you, but uh, <laughs> basically you can drop a thing from the sky. And if it lands in the garden, uh, you'll get your name on the screen. That's about it. <laughs> it's, it's totally random. Uh, that drop landed. Let's see. GM awesome. Great work. And thank you, Alien, for the 100 bits. Um, the closer you are to the center of the garden, the bigger your name will be. Uh, but, not only, so if you do drop me, that's going to drop your Twitch avatar. But you can also drop um, emotes, Twitch emotes, like this one. Ah! <laughs> there it is. You can also drop emojis, too. And it's, it's completely random. 
it has a random velocity, a, ran, a random x and y velocity, and then if it happens, just so happens to land here, you get your name on the screen. That's about it. Uh, and what's up, Fantasy Teapot? Hello, hello. And hello, Rablin. And Green David. Yeah, and congrats again on that junior dev job. And hello, Shibza. What's up, Bolchan, who says, I'm a Ruby on Rails dev, and I love Rails. Uh, Ruby 3. Ruby and Rails. <laughs> Ruby 3 will be released this Christmas and will be way faster. Nice. Yeah, so uh, a few years ago, uh, Ruby on Rails was r extremely popular. It was what a lot of startups were choosing to to build their apps with. I don't see it as popular anymore, but there are, there are a lot of companies that started back then that were using Ruby on Rails and they're still using Ruby on Rails, at least from what I've seen in my area of the world. And what's up, uh, Niku Nimer, and Shulk Fox, and Nerdophile, and Mr. Dino, and uh, Dedadev, and Kuzi, and uh, Akak, and Kunal. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> what's up, uh, Saheb Jiri. Hello, hello. Hello, Martin. And anonymously, Simon says, hello. <laughs> what's up, Simon? <laughs> Infi, how's it going? What's up, the Let's Failer? Your hair looks dope. Thank you very much. What's up, Picious? And Avi, uh, still working on my Electron YouTube downloader. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And scan me more. Hello, what's up, Herbert? And one Portuguese farm. <laughs> Hi. Uh, what's up, Chad and uh, Bajanath and Fortsi? And AZ's with a thousand bits. That's three zeros. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. Uh, what happened with the green hair? It was fried, so I cut it off. Tip don't make me do yard work. I don't like yard work at all. Uh, what's up, uh, Abjik and Headless Creator and Raz Poutine and The Hacker and Demented and Mindspark and uh, LTTF and Commodore Dragon and Ed Suster and Sayit and Shot in the Dark says, welcome to the short hair gang. Nice. Yeah, it is low maintenance. It absolutely is. <laughs> oh, you had to clean up a chicken poop coop. Not, uh, I mean, pr you probably cleaned up chicken poop in your chicken coop. Um, <laughs> the bottom of it. I've I've contemplated getting a chicken coop because in my part of Denver, Colorado that I live in, uh, I live in the city, but we're technically allowed to have chickens. My neighbor has like three or four chickens. I thought about it. Yeah, fresh eggs. Um, they're really loud though. I've I've woken up at like five a.m. because there's a chicken on my doorstep that triggered my security camera. But yeah. <laughs> Um, what's up, Shot in the Dark, and Sea Piggot, and I am Roos, and Mark, and Skarika, and Nessie, and Crispy Rebel, and Chris Griffin. Hello, hello. What's up, Fight? And Yellow. Yes, I cut my hair. Hello, Verbatim. I'm doing well. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here. Hello, Dewanch, and Aztec Consulting, and Rowdy the Brand, and Eternal Dev Coder, and I am Frustrated Coder. <laughs> what's up, Chewy Cash? And Pow says, nice game. Do I have a tutorial for this, too? Um, sort of. If you check out the Frequently Asked Questions, there's a breakdown of all the... All the codes that are running all of the overlays on my screen. Um, if you so, this is the frequently asked questions, but there's a specific file document in here that talks about all the different things, and you can see that the drop game overlay. Um, there's links to the source code, and then there's links to YouTube videos where I built the thing. I wouldn't necessarily call it a tutorial, but I did build it live, and I did talk about what I was doing when I when I built it. So you can check it out there. I should train pigeons. <laughs> Uh, and what's up, Extra Roman and Kabanks and John and Nam Refo and Rossum and hello, hello. I don't know how to say your name, but I think um, I get a pronunciation if I do this. No matching login. Zulols. <laughs> Zulols. How's it going? Thanks for being here. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation. At least that's what Twitch says. And Silver Designs, hello. Hello, Rysel. And Wooden Pliers, how can we drop on your shirt's garden? Oh, you can't. You can't. We've talked about this before. We could do some cool stuff with the camera where, like, if I if I swipe, it, like, actually hits the drops that are falling. Um, that would probably be really hard, though. But, eh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> What's up, Nate? Um, less than... 101,000 days until graduation. Great. Great. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Is this binary? Is this binary? We'll do a binary conversion. I mean, I don't know why I'm writing code to do, to do this. <laughs> um, I think... I mean, I could... Actually, it actually would be really easy to do it in JavaScript. I could just do it in the browser, but check it. Uh, we could say 
uh, parse int. Uh, you pass in the string and then the radix you say two. So we're parsing this as base two. It's going to parse it to decimal um, days equals that. Let's see what happens. This could have been so much easier to do. <laughs> could have been so much easier. Uh, no, 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 not that, not that. Um, we'll get there. Binary conversion. Here we go. 45, 45 days until graduation. Great job. Great job, Nate. And hello, iterator. Um, and uh, what's up, Gennard? And procrastinating watching CJ. Um, and Hadrel Punjabi, who says, I should train pigeons. <laughs> what's up, and, uh, and Kino? And uh, Tikristan and Ike? Uh, and Adbur came from YouTube. Very cool. And uh, Dilladil, welcome to the show. Hey, and thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. <laughs> um, anyone else, if I have not said hello to you, feel free to say hi in the chat and um, I'll, I'll acknowledge you. I will notice you. I'll attempt to say your name. Hi in the chat. <laughs> What's up, Shaggy? How's it going? And Infy. I believe I already said hey to you, Infy, but hello. And Sequel Gorchter. Hope you had a great week. It was all right. I feel like my weekend's going to be pretty hectic, too. And Practic, how's it going? And Jards and Olars and Organic Kev. My name's Kev. Welcome. And Arul, hello. And Thor, enjoy. Welcome. Lots of new faces. Well, new names. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get let's get started. So what we're gonna do today is just we're gonna be answering questions. I prefer smooth peanut butter. Yeah, um, we're gonna be answering questions from vox.coding.garden. If you do exclamation mark vox in the chat, actually you don't have to because I'm going to. Um, you're gonna get a link to it. You can go there. You can see the chat commands that you can run to get a question here. And I'll say if you have already asked a question. Type exclamation mark here in the chat, and your questions will, will bubble up to the top. What happened to my hair? I cut it off. <laughs> uh, John has a question from a month ago. Uh, what, uh, what programming languages do I hate using? I don't really have a hate for any language. I will say the one that's probably the most frustrating and weird to work with was Objective-C. And the last time I worked on that with that was like in 2009. Uh, nowadays, so object, object, Objective C is the language that you used to have to use to program on for uh, Mac apps and iOS apps. Now it's been um, superseded by Swift, which is a, a much easier to grasp programming language. Um, but Objective C is weird. It, it's it's not like anything you've seen before. Probably it has. Let's see, let me see if I can find an example. Actually, um, there's Learn X and Y minutes, which is a website that lists. A, most programming languages and like kind of breaks down how they work. But let's see if we can find Objective C. And hey, Awaited! Thank you for that five month resub. Am I late? No. Hello, Awaited. You're just in time. <laughs> just in time. Okay. So the weird thing about C, it has this, it has this weird like message passing interface where like you end up using a lot of strings um, to like call functions, to access properties. It's, it's kind of weird. Let me see if I can find an example of it. Um... These are just like printing strings, so that's fine. Um, it, I think I think it's like it's like this. You see a lot of brackets. I can't even remember how it actually works. Um, I did not know Lychos had dark mode. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I I honestly can't even remember. It was so long ago that I used it. I can't remember, but it's weird. It's it's really weird. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, um, because there is one, um. So, uh, what's that? There's that cross-platform C-sharp thing. Xamarin. Xamarin. Uh, they got bought by Microsoft, but um, they are cross-platform for these different things. And one of the really cool things that Xamarin did was they created, like, strong typings for a lot of these Objective-C message passing interface things, um, which was way better because you get, like, autocomplete and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I can't explain it because it's been so long and I can barely even understand what this code is even saying. But uh, <laughs> I would say the I don't hate it, but it is so much different than everything I've ever done. And a lot of it seems backwards. So that's one language that I don't like. And rate. Thank you very much for that gifted sub to one line of me. And thank you for the question, John. 
Um, I'm going to skip this question. We'll come back to it because I did answer your question just now. Um, John Timon or Timon says, why is my camera so jittery? Um, probably a lot of reasons, but it is, I have a new camera. It's a, it's a DSLR. It's a, a Canon EOS Rebel T7. It's like entry level DSLR. Um, so I have that, but Canon has... Actually, I need to update my setup page, um, but uh, Canon has a USB webcam utility. And a uh, quick stretch, <laughs> quick stretch. Oh, thank you, Irmo. Yeah, I'm glad people like it. Some people are freaking out. They're like, I don't know what to do. It's not the same person. But um, Canon has a, a webcam utility where you can actually capture the source of a camera using just a USB cable. So you, um, yes, exactly. So you, uh, you don't need a, a separate like HDMI capture card, and which is the, the way I used to do it. And I'll and I'll show you. Um, I used to use one of these, which, which is just like a, a $200 HD camcorder. Um, but it, it has decent quality. And then this has a mini HDMI out. I would plug that into a, a capture card. This thing, which basically takes the HDMI signal and allows me to use it on stream. But um, I decided I wanted to try to make it look a little bit better. And so I got a DSLR. And that, and specifically I got this one because it supports USB out. Now, the question was, uh, what was the question? <laughs> Why is my camera so jittery? I don't know. It could be the, the frame rate. Um, I don't know. Do I appear slower than normal? But I can, I can kind of see it. It's not, yeah, it's not. And then I have a few filters applied to it. Let me show you. Um, this, this might there okay so i might look a little bit blurrier now <laughs> oh it got better oh okay okay <laughs> i still it still doesn't look completely like so i'm actually so you can see right now um it is a little it, it, it's not necessarily blurry but then i put a sharpen filter on it and then it's like more crisp more crisp yeah yeah and then i also added color are you ready for this <laughs> Um, this is without the color correction filter. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, is there an ETA when more streams are returning? Not really. Um, I have a product launch next week. The, the main reason I'm not streaming as often is because I have, I'm working on multiple projects at work and I am, um, <laughs> I'm on dead now. <laughs> working on multiple projects at work and, I, and I'm swamped. I'm, I'm just really busy. I don't really have the, the energy to be doing streams outside of work like I used to. Um, and things are sort of starting to die down because we have a product launch next week, but I don't know. Uh, all right. Uh, Sami says, did I vote? I did. And I hope you voted as well. I mean, it's all over now. <laughs> all, all the votes are in. They're being counted. Um, but I did vote. Uh, Siberia says, I've been working on Node, but I still don't know when to use async await. I never learned in college. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a quick, a quick rundown. Let's do it. Let's talk about async await. Do I prefer sweet or savory? Probably sweet, savory. I don't know. <laughs> um, when to use a sync. Oh, wait. A self invoking async function. <laughs> the garden is no longer, the garden got trimmed. There's no longer a garden on my head. Um, so this question is uh, comes from. I keep losing. <laughs> I, I got to pin these questions. <laughs> uh, Siberia asked the question, um, when to use async await? And actually, I think, so I can, I can pin a question, but I don't think everybody else can see the pin question. But that's the question I'm answering right now. Um... So the, the, the quick answer to when to use async await is if it deals with promises. So the, um, I mean, people have called me out on this before. I should use multi-line commenting like this. Like that. 
Um, oh, right, right here. Okay. Um, if something returns a promise, that's pretty much it. If you are dealing with a function that returns a promise, um, that's when you can use async await because async await is really just syntactic sugar for promises. Like you can't have async await without promises. Uh, and so let's talk about some things that return a promise. Uh, since I'm in Node.js, I'm just going to use the FS module, which can like read or write files to the file system. Um, and that should be an example enough, but but really anything that returns a promise, so like a, an HTTP request or something like that. Um, but yeah, let's just bring in FS. Um, and thank you ACs for that focus mode. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and turn it on and write some code. Ordering pizza returns a promise. This is true. <laughs> and I I I, uh, um, I wrote a I did a stream a while back uh, where I. Uh, basically reverse engineered the Domino's Pizza API live on stream, and then I used JavaScript to uh, order a pizza live on stream. This is this really happened. It was a four-hour stream. Within that four-hour stream, we literally wrote code to order a pizza, and it uh, returned promises because uh, thing pizza takes time. Um, okay, what am I doing? We're gonna go into focus mode. <laughs> focus start eight minutes. Here we go. Um, okay, so uh, the question is, when do we use async await if something returns a promise? Now, uh, in the FS module, there is a promises namespace. So be um, because if you just try to do like FS dot uh, like read file, this actually works on callbacks. So you can pass in a path like thing.txt. Um, and then um, I believe you can say like UTF-8 or something like that. And then you pass it in a callback that gives you the data. And so this is not a promise. This is callback based, right? We write our code inside this function and that function will get called when the thing is done reading the file. Um, if we wanted to return a promise, we can either, we could wrap this to create our own promise, but uh, FS has a promises name state space. So you can do fs.promises and that basically provides all of those functions, but they're asynchronous and they return a promise. So we can do something like fs.read file um, and we see that this returns a promise uh, with a buffer to read, actually read the file in. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to, well, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to make the code read its own code. <laughs> so uh, I'm literally going to read in this file that the code is running inside of. So I'm going to read in the file index.js, um, and I believe I can just say UTF-8, and this returns a promise. So um, right now, I don't think I have top level await. Um, but right now, if I, if I didn't have async await, I would use promises. I would say dot then we get back the data. Oh. And then we can just log that data out. Uh, and if there was an error, we could catch it. Err. And then we could log that error out. Like this. Um, so because read file returns a promise, that means that we can say dot then to run a function excuse me, <laughs> to run a function when it's done and actually use the data. Um, or we can catch the error if an error happens. So if I run this, we should actually see the contents of the file output to the console. Boom. So it read the file in, it spit it out. Good to go. Now, because this returns a promise, and, and, and really, like th this may be where you start to use this in your code. Like If you see your code, and you see that it has dot .then and dot .catch, that means you can rewrite it with async await. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going we're gonna to rewrite this with async await. Um, now, the tricky part about that is I don't know if we can do top level await. And what that means is I want to be able to do something like this. Data equals await that. And then we can just log the data immediately after. So, um, yeah, and I don't, I don't think I can. But you can see, instead of doing dot then, we put the word await in front of the thing that returns a promise, and then the thing that would have been the uh, argument to the function in the dot then actually becomes the variable that we're assigning it to, and then we can use it. Um, let's see if this works because I'm, I think I'm on node 14. Yeah, await is only valid in an async function. Um, let me see what version of Note. I'm on 14.9. I think version 15 was released, wasn't it? We should. We need to get top 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 level await. Um, yeah, let's install 15. Let's install 15. Cool. Well, 
Um, <laughs> even in Node 15, it isn't supported. That's okay, though. Yeah, so what, what we need is an async function. And, and, and basically, like, that's why you're going to see that error is, uh, right now, this code is not inside of a function. We need to put it inside of a function that's marked as async. Eventually, you won't need to do that. Uh, Coding Diego, thank you very much for that two-month resub. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah, I got a haircut. Uh, Harmony top level await. Thanks, thanks, Doc. So uh, here, let's just run the code to show you that this will work or not. <laughs> uh, do I need to do it? I'm in. I'm in version 15. Uh, regardless. Right now, as of right now, you technically need an async function. So you have a function that's something like um, read in file. We can put all of our codes in here. And then we need to mark that function as async. So we say this is an async function. And so that's how async await work together. Uh, eventually, you won't need to do this. Eventually, you can just put await anywhere you want. Um, meaning like at the top level and it doesn't have to be wrapped in a function oh make it dot mjs okay okay we'll do it <laughs> all right so we have this we're going to rename our file to dot mjs um and then we're going to read in mjs instead all right here we go moment of truth ta-da cannot find module index.js that makes sense mjs Require is not defined. Oh, well, <laughs> now that we're in a module, we can't require FS in anymore, so we have to import it. So we'll say import FS uh, from FS. Like that. How about now? There we go. So it's a lot. <laughs> I don't. I don't like this. Um, let, 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 let's uh, let's let's do this. We're going to move this code um, into a, a .js file and uh show you there because i mean that's the world that we're in right now it's not it's not completely supported um cool and then i'll show you that right now if you're not going to be running behind a feature flag you basically need to uh put it in a function so await can't be at the top level got ourselves a function uh, function do the thing and then we move our code inside the function um, we put the async keyword on it and and now it should work um, but you'll notice if we compare this with the old code we're not actually catching the error and that's one thing whenever you're using async await you still need to catch the errors otherwise you get an uncaught exception um, so if we run this nothing happens because we didn't call the function but I'll show you nothing happens we need to call the function uh, and if we call the function, that uh, will do the thing. There we go. Beautiful. Um, wait, what? Is that reading the old file? What's happening here? Oh, because we're reading in mjs. <laughs> we need to read in .js. It's like, what? Why is there top level away? There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, but... Again, because we're using async await, we, we actually do need to catch the error, and that's where I will wrap this in a try catch. So uh, try to do this, and if there is an error, uh, we can do something with it. In this case, we're just going to log it. Uh, let's try reading in a file that doesn't exist. We should be able to catch that error. Uh, no such file or directory. Great. Great, great, great. Um, and then let's see, if we didn't catch that error, let's see what would happen. So now that we're not catching the error, and we try to read in something that doesn't exist. We get a different error. Oh, well, it's the same error, but it says we're triggering an uncaught exception, meaning the Node.js runtime has seen that we threw an exception, but it wasn't caught anywhere. But when we wrap it in try catch, we're actually uh, catching it. Cool. So the question was, um, I don't know when to use async await. If you see code that is using dot then and dot, that, dot catch, that means you can use async await. And if code is using dot then and dot catch, it means that you're calling a function that returns a promise. And if a function returns a promise, you can await it. What's that cat doing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was probably an, an emote that got dropped. I don't know. Um, cool. And so th th this is it. This is how you do it with uh, without async await. And this is how you do it with async await. 
Yeah. I, I don't, the, the thing is, I don't think we're there yet. Like there are, Obviously, we can do it with some feature flags, but most people aren't going to be running their code with feature flags. Yeah. yeah and so hopefully that helps Cyber. Like, it, it takes practice. Like, it takes, like, taking code you have that uses dot .then and dot .catch and converting it, but that's that's the main rule. That's the main rule. No. No, 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 no. Await does not halt. Await behaves exactly like dot .then dot .catch. It's basically just syntactic sugar. Behind the scenes, there's a basically a runtime that will pause the, the execution of the function, but it doesn't halt the entire program. It, it pauses inside the function right here. If you have other code running, that code can keep on running. Um, this uh, is basically pushed onto the uh, the. Well, actually, it goes off and it's it's pushed onto the queue. So basically, when when the execution resumes, it gets uh, popped off of the queue to resume execution in that exact spot. Yeah, yeah. there's no halt. No halting. <laughs> it, uh, it pa it's, it's different, right? Like it, it pauses and it's so that that function can continue executing later, but behind the scenes, anything else that's running in your program gets to keep on running. It's not like it doesn't stop everything else from running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, async await makes your code look more synchronous, even though it is still asynchronous and behind the scenes, it's working in the exact same, same way. It's just like, and so um, if you look at uh, polyfills for async await, or, or not polyfills, but like basically how you would take code with async await and then run it in a web browser that doesn't support async await, the transpiler... Hey, Deployedal, thank you very much for that resub. Who says content? Um, the transpiler basically rewrites this code to look like this. Um, and so that way it can run in older browsers that don't support async await. Yeah, so it, it pauses here, but ever, all the other code can keep on running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it pauses here, and then when this is done, it resumes, which then gets back the result, and then any code below that gets to continue running. Yeah, cool, great question. Thank you for asking. Let's let's keep going. Um, if you have asked a question, type exclamation mark here in the chat, and it'll it'll bubble up. Yeah, non-blocking. That's a good way to put it. Thank you, Shine's love. Yeah, so it has to do with with the the JavaScript event loop. Um, if you're not familiar with the JavaScript event loop, there's some really good YouTube videos. This is a really good one from JSConf. Uh, by Philip Roberts, and then also this one by Jake Archibald, uh, which basically describe how JavaScript works. And, and they talk about um, the the micro task queue, which is basically what promises are, but it's somewhat similar to uh, asynchronous methods like set timeout or set interval, where um, they basically push a function into a queue that's going to be ex executed later. Yeah, uh, but. That that if you watch those videos, you'll learn to learn a bit more how things work under the hood and how it's able to actually pause execution. Um, okay, uh, question from Cape: Could you do a video about state management in vanilla JavaScript? Uh, it's interesting to do something like that without frameworks. I've done a couple. Um, I don't know if I want to take the time to do it right now, but I will point you to some things I've done in the past. Um, so actually, if you just search my video site for state. Um, this video talks about what is application state. So I, I, I basically, this is for someone that's new to this idea of like state. They hear, they're hearing state everywhere. They've tried to learn React. Maybe you've tried to learn Vue. They talk about state. You have no idea what state is. This talks about state and um, in the context of vanilla JavaScript, like without frameworks. And then I, I basically show you what it means and how you would write an application that kind of like doesn't use state versus one that does. And then I also show you how to write that exact same app using Vue and their built-in state mechanism. So you can check out this video. Um, and then uh, similarly, I did a video on um, building like a mini framework from scratch. Uh, if you search for vanilla MVC, this one. Um, so this was recorded uh, right. live in front of a studio audience. <laughs> it was recorded at a meetup, but a bunch of people were there and they're super hyped and drinking beer and stuff. So it's kind of comical. Um, but in roughly 27 minutes, I, I implement uh, data binding. I create a router. Uh, I create a small component system, all, all with vanilla JavaScript. Um, and you, you, you I, I call it MVC because that's model view controller. So I basically show you how um, 
you every component has their own little model which is basically just state and then we used proxies so that if the state is updated it automatically refreshes the view um yeah thank you for that that was asked a month ago though thank you cape for asking that um yeah, so if you've asked a question, type exclamation mark here. It'll bubble up to the top. Because um, I know there are some other people that ask questions today. Uh, this one comes from Johnny Drama. As a new junior engineer, when is a good time to ask for help when you're working on a task that you don't know what to do after trying yourself first? Um, it's classic. This is a classic question. <laughs> um, and uh, the answer is... Try your darndest, like do ev absolutely everything in your power to figure something out before asking, because you're, you're going to, for one, you're going to, you're going to build a lot of character. Uh, it's going to be frustrating because you're not, you're kind of not going to know what to do, but you have to, you have to basically do everything in your power to figure that thing out. And that may mean searching, like going to the fifth page of Google, uh, Google search results, like searching in every possible place on how to do this thing, um, to figure it out yourself. Now, very obviously you don't want to be spinning your wheels for too long, uh, because then you're holding up the project. But I would say if you really want to grow in that area, you kind of just have to figure things out. And, um, the, the other thing to add to that is when you go to ask for help from like a senior engineer or your team lead or whatever, you should come prepared. You should you should basically have written out all of the things that you've tried. You should have a list of what you think the issue might actually be. Um, and, and basically, when you go to that senior engineer or to, or to your team lead, you you go to them and you you basically say, "I've done everything in my power, and if you want to look, this is what I've tried. Can you please help me?" Because uh, when people don't come to me with that, it makes me think that they haven't tried, right? It makes me think that uh, they've kind of just given up and they want me to solve it for them. Um, but if you do your research and you prove to them that you have and you show that you're trying, um, they'll they'll help you out for sure. And thank you, Ratty the Brand. <laughs> Great advice. 100% agree. But here's the thing. Like, it's it's weird to say, but for most of my career, even as a junior developer, I have just tried and tried and tried to figure things out like that that's one of the things about being a developer is being extremely persistent like literally google searching the same thing over and over again until you eventually maybe sort of find an answer um it, it, it's it's hard it, it's like it's frustrating but eventually you'll get there but like and, and also you have you have to be um uh a bit pragmatic about it, right? You have to keep track of the things you've tried um, so that you're not necessarily trying the same things over and over again. But yeah, hopefully that helps a little bit. Do your best, but also keep track of it and come to that senior dev or whoever you're asking for help with evidence of what you've tried so that they it can help them a little bit more in helping you. Help them help you. That's all I got to say. <laughs> All right, this question comes from Rulan. Uh, if you were to make a multiplayer game in JavaScript, what stack would I choose? I'll say I'm not the best person to ask this question because I, I don't really write games. Uh, in any multiplayer type thing that I've written, I did from scratch. I didn't really use an engine or anything like that. Um, so um, a few of them like... Uh, what's the... Dung Hero. <laughs> Dung Hero Online. <laughs> No, not that. Um, so this is a website where anybody can go to this website right now and click on a dung, and then it increases the counter. Um, and this technically is a multiplayer game because anybody that goes here, uh, we're going to see in real time that dungs start disappearing. Um, yeah, you can see they're disappearing. So multiple people are on this website, and they're clicking. Um, very, very obviously, this isn't complex. This is a super simple idea. It's basically shared state between, like, there's a, like, a master state that's on the server, and then anyone else that comes to the website is just emitted that master state from the, from the server. Um, but this is insane. This website has not gone down, because this, this is an in-memory number, and the, uh, 648,000 dungs have been clicked. Cool, but, um... I wrote this on stream. I wrote it from scratch. I didn't really use a framework. Um, we also have, uh, like, is it New Year's Day? Like, I I'm using Socket.io, so I mean, I am using that framework. Um, 
but there are probably libraries and frameworks out there that help with like server side game state and like synchronizing between clients. Yeah, it's all in memory. <laughs> uh, and if anybody goes to is it New Year's Day and this 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 website's going to be relevant pretty soon. I wrote this a year ago, but um, if you go here, it'll tell you whether or not it's New Year's Day. And then anybody that's on the site, you can see their see their their mouse moving. Uh, and if you open up the console, you can do uh, actions dot set emoji. Pass in a string with your preferred emoji. Uh, I'm going to do a tractor. And then for everyone else that's on the site, you should see my tractor. <laughs> And so again, this is like another silly example of a real time thing where multiple people are on the site. Yeah. Now, so this this website was fun because we we got it translated into like hundreds of languages. So if you if you go to this website, it's gonna say uh, nine or yet or uh, or, or any other word, word. no um, in your language. And then one of the one of the fun parts was translating this here because pluralization doesn't work the same way in all languages. Um, I built a lot of sites. A lot of it has just been on stream. Oh, a firecracker. Nice, nice. Um, okay, but to, to answer your question, I, I have no idea. Um, like was mentioned in the chat, Phaser is definitely a, a popular choice when it comes to building HTML5 based games. I don't know if they provide, I don't think they provide a server, server side component because that's, if you want a real time game between clients, that's what you're going to need is some sort of server state that keeps track of everything and then it admits to the clients and then you also have like optimistic rendering on each of the clients um yeah uh it didn't do everything that we wanted avi um because it's more than just a duration it's like we specifically wanted to say how many uh hours minutes days months and international api doesn't support that directly um cool but if you search for like uh, javascript multiplayer game framework. You might find some things, because I've done some research before. Yeah, I think Calisius um, is something I came across a while back. I've never used it, but it seems like something that could work, because they basically provide a framework for having real-time communication between all of your connected clients and managing game state on the server. Something like this you could check out. Um, Lance. I haven't seen this one, but probably. Basically, my answer is, um, I have no idea. <laughs> and if I had to choose, I'd have to do some research. So thank you for your question, uh, Rulan. Cool. Uh, if you're here, type exclamation mark here in the chat. Uh, Sledge Dog has a question. Often some features like Google Auth or Facebook Auth are not working when users open the URL via Facebook Messenger, which wraps my app. Any idea how to solve this? It's tricky. I think potentially what's happening is um, your page is loading inside of the browser inside of that app, right? Like you, um, <laughs> what's up, Olaf? Yeah, I cut my hair. <laughs> uh, but you might, be, you might be familiar with that. Like if you, I, I think Slack does this. If you're using certain Reddit browsers, they might do that. And like when you click a link, it doesn't actually open your default web browser. It opens the browser inside of that app which isn't necessarily full featured. Um, I think that's what you're talking about. And I don't have a good answer. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that because <laughs> I've come across this too. Um, uh, basically, um, uh, we, we told our users, don't click this link from within apps. Like you need to go to this URL directly. So copy and paste it. I, I don't know. I, I could do some research, but I, I really don't know. Um, there, there, maybe Facebook Messenger has some sort of API where you could um, embed something maybe in the query string or something like that so that it doesn't try to open it internally. Yeah, it's basically in-app browsing, yeah. Just got a sub. It didn't show up on the screen, though. Go, go, Cap. Thank you very much for that two-month resub. I'm sorry it didn't show up. But I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hopefully, there's not anyone else like that. Uh, yeah, Chris. Chris says it doesn't. Um, I don't know. Like you, you could potentially do some feature detection and like display a um, a modal in your app or like a message that says, "Hey, it looks like you opened this link inside of an app. Please open it in your browser." And I don't know how you would do that. 
basically my answer is I don't know. <laughs> I would have to do some research, but I know what issue you're talking about. Um, cool. Anybody else that has asked a question, type exclamation mark here. It'll bubble up to the top. Yeah. Where have I been? Yeah, I'm just hanging out. I mean, working, mostly. <laughs> Um, yeah. Navigation agent property. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Balrog. That could work. The navigation agent might tell you what the browser type is or something like that. Okay, question from Limotes that was asked a month ago. <laughs> when working with Vue, or React for that matter, for bigger projects, do you usually start building everything out and then separate into components as you go? Or do you recommend planning out components before starting? Um, let's take a quick stretch and then I'll answer this question. Ooh. My arms are white. <laughs> My arms are fair. I mean, I guess there's a, a light reflection on them. Okay. I will say, um, it is good to plan out your components beforehand. But I'll also say that you can do. It's possible to do too much planning. It's possible that you basically over plan and then your component structure becomes way too rigid because you haven't actually used the components, which is why I prefer the former rather than, than the latter. So I basically prefer to write really big, ugly components and then break them apart um, as necessary. So I write like one really big, ugly component. And then in some other place in my app, I realize that I need to reuse that functionality that is in that really big, ugly component. And then based on these two use cases, I try to create a component that is able to be used in both places. And, and by doing that, you're, you're, you're creating a better API for your component. Um, it's less rigid, it's more reusable in more places um, because you have um, a, a real life scenario of using that component so you can make decisions about what should be props, um, what should be slots or what should be children that are passed in, um, different things like that. And so that, that's why I prefer to do it after the fact is because you have a way better idea of how to break that component down. That said, you can still um, do some planning ahead of time and, and things like, of course, you're going to have a nav bar component. You're going to have like a list item component. But once it starts to get to more specific types of components, like more specific things inside of one of those high level components, that's when I think you should wait to figure out what the component API or structure should actually be. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the way it's it's like general programming. It really is. It's it's it, like components are kind of no different than creating your own functions that are refactored and reusable. But yeah, uh, I'm probably going to be streaming for another forty minutes. I'd say first do it, then do it right, then do it better. Yeah, it's a good one, uh, Gandalfs. <laughs> thank you for that question, Limotes. How much info do you think should be stored in JSON Web Tokens? Um. Anything that is should not be secret. And thank you for this question, uh, Ally Post, um, uh, who also has a comment. A really nice tip for API design is to write the usage code first and then write the API itself. That way you don't create awkward abstractions. Yes. I have dealt with so many awkward abstractions in my career. Um, and an and, and awkward abstraction, and thank you, uh, let's go for that four month resub. Uh, an awkward abstraction is when you, you're working with a library and that library provides functions that you can call or components that you can use. Um, that is an API. It's an application programming interface. Some programmer somewhere has decided what functions should be available, what arguments are passed into those functions, what components are available, what props those components have. That is an API. It's an application programming interface. And if, if they created that without actually using the code themselves, they may not understand how awkward it is to use. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, um, a, a, an example, uh, Ionic. The Ionic uh, framework, and specifically the UI components, have very awkward abstractions, uh, and they're very brittle. I do not like them. Um, I don't hate them, I just don't like them. It could be done better. And for one, I realize why they are this way, because they're basically trying to support multiple frameworks. They support React, they support Angular, they support Vue. And to do that, 
Um, under the hood, all of these are actually implemented as web components, um, but that creates some really awkward ways of doing things when, for example, you're trying to use these components in React. Um, and uh, the, yeah, the structure, the abstractions are just awkward. It feels like they didn't actually use the components themselves. And so I completely agree with that. <laughs> I've come across that a lot. Uh, when's the next stream going to be? Um, I mean, right now it's planned for next Friday, but I don't think it can be Monday. I've got, I'm just really busy at work next week. So yeah. Yeah. What do I mean? Usage code first. Um, and th this is actually, uh, this is a cool topic. Let's, let's talk about it. Um, because I, I like to do this. I, I, I think you might have, um, heard of it as like consume first development where basically it's in it's, it's kind of similar to test driven development in that before you write the implementation, you, you call the fun, you, you write like dream code, you call the function that you wish existed. And that will help you figure out like what arguments you're going to need to be passed in, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Oh, nice, Harshit. That's good to hear. Congrats on getting good internet. <laughs> so capacitor is great because a capacitor is like the native bridge to talk to native things. And, and it's fine. They have really good plugins. But the Ionic components, those are the things that I'm saying are awkward. Um, uh, prime example is event tracing on Windows. Let's check it out. Welcome back, John. The worst API ever made. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's talking about writing usage code first. Cool. So that that article seems pretty pretty sweet. But let's just let's just somebody give me an example of a function that that I'm gonna that I sh that I should write. Um, it could be anything. Uh, we could get the weather. <laughs> Let's get the weather. Um, usage first example. How about the question you just asked? Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I'll I'll get there. I want to talk about usage first really quick. Oh, okay. I recently learned how arrow functions work, but I don't understand how it makes it simpler and more readable than functions. Oh, uh, we, we remind me, and after I write the code, We'll take a step back and talk about it in the context of like arrow functions versus regular functions. But yeah, um, yeah, you could have a, a canvas wrapper, which is like the P5 library or something like that. Uh, we got another sub that I'm not seeing on my screen. I appreciate you. I thank you very much. Uh, Layer three guru, thank you, and Lax, thank you as well. I don't think I saw either of those on my um, on my screen, but I appreciate you. Um, all right, we're going to do a usage first example. So wait, where's my editor? Come on. Come on. There we go. <laughs> um, so we need a function that gets the weather, right? And so if I wasn't doing this usage first, I could just decide, all right, I'm going to write a function called get weather. Um, and then I've decided, oh, well, to get the weather, we probably need a zip code, right? Or do we need an address? Let's just say it's zip code. Okay. This is, the, and then and then I go I go on about my day. Uh, write the function. <laughs> right. I'm not I'm not actually using it. I'm just writing the code to make it work. And later on, let's say I'm going to call this function. So uh, let, later on, I've implemented it, and now I want to call it. So I'm going I'm going to call get weather. Oh. Oh, but it but it only accepts zip code. What if I don't have the zip code? Do I have to handle finding the zip code to pass it into that function? I mean, and obviously this is a bit of a contrived example, but this is this is the scenario that you would run into where you're basically forcing people to use your thing in a specific way because you didn't think about all the different use cases. Like, what if I want to be able to pass in Denver like this, um, and um, what if I want to be able to do this? This API doesn't support that right now. So to me, that's potentially an awkward abstraction because they're basically forcing you to pass in zip code. Um, now, if I were to do consume first development, what's up, Andrew? Welcome to the show. Um, samples. We're going to make this an, uh, an async function. Um, so let's think about all the different ways that we might want to call this function. Like I want to call it with Denver. Um, I want to call it with the zip code. Um, I might want to call it with a latitude longitude. I don't know if this is right, <laughs> but 
Uh, I might want to call it with a latch. Yeah, I, I might want to call it with, um, like, what are all the other other ways um, do I want, would I potentially want to call this function? And, and obviously, this this would not be ideal to write it this way, because then we have to figure out, um, uh, oh, good job, uh, Herm's code. Because <laughs> uh, we'd have to figure out, like, what the arguments are. It might make, at this point, now that I see there are a lot of different ways that I want to call it, it might make more sense um, to... Um, just a second, give me that. It might make more sense to pass in an object that's named instead. Oh yeah, maybe you want to pass in county. Um, so something like Denver County or something like that. Yeah, what if you want to pass in a full address, like um, city, state, uh, and zip code, uh, and address. Right, and so this is usage. Use, this is usage first development because I'm thinking about all the different ways I would want to call my function. Um, and uh, Infi just mentioned it. A few other people have mentioned it. Now it doesn't really make sense for me to take in multiple arguments. Oh yeah, you could like yeah, why not? Let's do a landmark. Let's say um, what's the weather at uh, the uh, DIA, Denver International Airport, or something like that. But as you can see, the, the arguments are now confusing because sometimes the first argument's a city, sometimes it's a county, sometimes it's an address, sometimes it's a, a location. So that would make more sense for me to actually pass in an object with options. So I can pass in an object and say like city is Denver, um, or I can pass in an object and say a zip code is 80202. Um, or I could pass in uh, an object and say lat, lat and longe, lat is that, longe is that. Um, or I could pass in an object and say that the county is this county that, and, and you probably would need to pass in the state, something like that. Um, or if I'm passing in all of these, I would need to specify what each one is. So we have the address, uh, we have the state, we have the, uh, sorry, the city, city, <laughs> state. Um, and then we have the zip code, the state of Denver. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and, uh, or we have the, like the landmark here. So now with this consume first code, we've, we've figured out probably a, pr a pretty good API, right? And thank you very much, Andrew Lane for that Twitch Prime sub. Did someone say seven months? Yeah, that's crazy, seven months. Um, but by figuring out all my use cases first, I've potentially designed a better interface for this function get weather. And, and now when I go to implement it, I can think about that. Uh, and maybe let's uh, let, maybe at first we only support zip code. Um, and so like we have some code here. So let's call this options instead of zip code. Um, and we, we basically make sure that options.zip code has a thing. If it's not, then we'll say it's not supported. Um, oh yeah, we might also want to pass in date or like a date range. Right, but by doing usage first development, uh, we basically can decide and figure out how are all the different ways that we're going to use this so it makes it less awkward to implement. And we 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 have to we don't have to go back and like retrofit this function over and over again basically if we if we think about this ahead of time it's going to allow us to create a a much more um usable and less rigid api yeah okay um and then the user would pass city denver and state texas <laughs> and then and then you just return an error because you, you couldn't find it that's all that's all um now, uh, the question that John asked was about um, arrow functions. So they said, I recently learned how arrow functions work, but I don't understand how it makes it simpler and more readable than functions. Um, this, I actually don't know if I can show an example with the, <laughs> with the, the code that I have, um, but we could try to come up with an example to show you. Let's answer this question. Denver City, Texas, is that a thing? <laughs> England, England is your city? Yeah, I mean, it, you basically would have code in here that like validates the address or it calls an API to validate the address and that would throw an error, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let's talk about this question from John, which was basically, um, how do arrow functions make things simpler? 
And uh, the main thing is they, they make working with this, working with the this keyword, they make that simpler. Um, people might argue that it's like they, they like the how terse a, an arrow function is because you don't have to type the function keyword or a name. You just do uh, parentheses fat arrow. Um, but there, there's more to it than that. It's not just the syntax. It's also the, the implications of context. Yes, lexical scoping, as Nerdophile has said. Um, let's, let's write an example. Um, why arrow functions? What's up, uh, Chulette from Panama? Very cool. This versus that. Yeah. <laughs> if you write idiot proof code, they just build a better idiot. You know, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, cool. So this question comes from John, which is basically asking, um, well, let's take a quick stretch. But they're asking, uh, how do arrow functions make code simpler? Um, I mean, React probably is a it's a it's an easy place to demonstrate how it makes your code easier using arrow functions rather than. I'm trying to think of other examples that would be easy to show. And hello, Zach. And Excavator and Miguel, thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, one Portuguese farm says, how many hours do I spend not sitting versus sitting? I mainly stand when I'm streaming. I have a sit-stand uh, desk that I work at, but it's mainly in the sitting position. Yeah, I was thinking about DOM events, but then it would have to be like functions on an object that... Um, because you want to keep the this context. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I saw there was a quote that this is like related to. I saw. You don't have to use the function keyword with arrow functions. Yeah, that's one thing. Oh, I have that too, Designer Geek, I think. Um, but you know what I called it? I just don't ever use it. But I called it mkcd because it's like xkcd so it makes a directory and cds into it check it <laughs> uh that's in my bass profile too um what did you call it MC mcd that's like mcdonald's mine's like i liked how close it was to xkcd which is a web comic set timeout yeah callbacks Anytime you need to use an anonymous callback is a good case. Yes, but also that needs to be inside of something that has some other context. I kind of want to demonstrate it with React because that's where most of the pains of using it. Um, yeah, so John, would it be okay to show you an example in React? Or is that just is that just adding complexity? Why not? Okay. <laughs> Use an iron ironing board to have. Hey, it's it's adjustable. I think that's a it's a good uh, cheap stand up desk. Oh, uh, the jive. If you put exclamation mark ask followed by your question in the chat, it'll pop up here. Um, but um, all right. Let, 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 I mean, I would hate to have to create a React app. <sighs> yeah. Let me see if I can come up with a good example. Could use React CDN, but then I would have to use like the Babel CDN or do like create element. It's, I think that's too much complexity to explain. It's a good example, but it's too much complexity for people that are totally new to this. All right, I'm gonna create a class. I'm fine with learning two things. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna start coding and hopefully something comes out. Okay, so we have a class called animal and it takes in a constructor name and then it says this dot name equals that name. Um, let's say that this uh, class also has wait what's going on here um, has a method called um, I don't know. Uh, let's say like this dot hunger 
Um, starts off as 100. Um, and then it has a function called walk. And when you walk, this dot hunger gets decreased by 10 every time you take a step. <laughs> Um, and then if you have a function called eat that takes in some food, um, and then this dot hunger, uh, gets increased by the value of the food, um, not to exceed 100, uh, wait, hunger, actually hunger starts off as zero. And then when you take a step, your hunger is increased. And then when you eat, your hunger is decreased. That makes more sense. Um, and then if this dot hunger uh, is greater than 100, it equals 100. Something like that. <laughs> um, prefer the Minecraft way? I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you, NG, uh, in, in FG code. Maybe an API library for HTTP. Yeah. Yeah, hunger is increased, not decreased. I think we fixed that. <laughs> The one space comes from the comment block. I'm curious why that's happening. Like, what, what is this complaining about? Oh, it's just a long line. Yeah. The client says their, their computer is getting tired and refuses to clear the Chrome cache to not harm it. <laughs> Leave the cache alone. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nikos. Thanks for hanging out with us. 100 or zero? I don't know. Uh, my hair got cut off. I mean, I cut my hair off. Uh, okay, so what else? So it takes a step, it eats. Um, now we need to do something that would involve arrow functions. So like, uh, maybe if, maybe uh, an animal has an inventory and that inventory uh, starts off with uh, hat. I'm just writing code and eventually hoping that I can figure out how to show you an example. <laughs> uh, what else do they have in their inventory? Um, uh, they have an axe. They have a hat and an axe. Hunger check. Oh. If it's less than zero, it equals zero. We don't want it to go below zero. We probably want a, a maximum for it as well, but. I'm over engineering. <laughs> think of something where we usually reassign this to, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So now that we have this uh, inventory here, um, we would potentially want to iterate through it. Yeah, one method uses another method, but then we need, what I wanted to show was like some sort of, um, oh, if hunger is greater than 100, then die. I like it. <laughs> this uh, is dead. False. Um, if this dot hunger is greater than or equal to 100, you dead. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how can I use the inventory to use like the this keyword or something like that. Um, well, what if they have a helmet? And what if we call this a player instead of an animal? <laughs> so, um, why is this complaining? Player is defined whenever you, that's fine. So a player has a helmet, and let's say whenever they're attacked, if they have a helmet, then we don't decrease their health by as much. Health starts off as 100. It acts as a weapon. I don't know. <laughs> this is how this simulates. I'm basically creating my own universe right now. It's a hunger game. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Yo-Yo Gam? Uh, no, don't pick one. You must do all of them. Yeah, those are the rules of the chat. Be kind, be mindful, be respectful, be considerate, open-minded, all that good stuff. Um, I didn't, th well, it, it should, I need more time 
to think about. I need more time to find a, a scenario where we have a... So here's the main scenario I'm trying to paint for you. The, all of these functions are using the this keyword, right? And this refers to the instance of the player. Where arrow functions would come into play is if I want to do something in the context of the player, but I'm inside of a function that's potentially accessing some other thing that might have a different context. Yeah. <laughs> An async timer that increases hunger at a low rate. I like it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, let's say we have a... Do we have like a tick function? Okay. Tick. So tick... As time moves forward, your hunger goes down. So this dot hunger minus equals one. And this dot health, health minus two. Beautiful, this is it. <laughs> um, uh, I like it, yeah, this, this should work. So, uh, oh yeah, hunger goes up, health, health spelled the right way goes down. I love it, okay. Yeah, we don't need inventory at this point. What's up, uh, Hazanishan? <laughs> So they eat, they can take steps. Hunger goes up, health goes down as as time goes on. This is how this is, this is how life works. All right. And now let's say I'm I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty sure we're almost there. So let's say we have um CJ is a new player. Uh, let's call it player 1. Great. And then um you could have another object that's like the game world or something like that, but you you basically want to say uh, set interval. So every two seconds, we want to say player one um, dot tick. Right? So every two seconds, and actually we'll, uh, will this work? Yeah, ready player one. <laughs> uh, if you do exclamation mark theme, you can get a link to my theme. So every two seconds, the game should tick, which increases hunger and decreases health. That's that's fine. Yeah, I guess we don't really care about health anymore. We just care about hunger. I have no idea what button I just pressed to make that happen. <laughs> something, something like that. Only if hunger stays up, then health goes down and not together. Yeah, we're, I got rid of, I got rid of health. Just hunger. Yeah, it's don't starve together. And I've been playing a ton of don't starve together. Um, okay, uh, this code should actually break because if we, if we do um, on, like, let's say in a in a different set interval, um, we have a function. Another one that uh, just logs player one dot hunger. So you do like uh, current hunger, something like this. All right, let's run the code. Uh, y arrow functions. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, for a thing that I missed. Let me let me find it. Um, uh, thank you for that six month resub. Who says would I consider a deployment string on AWS and Docker? Yeah, so I did one a while back. It was like a seven hour stream. Um, <laughs> DevOps takes time. I guess I'll say uh, it's so. Um, some people have mentioned I should start using something like. Um, Terraform or something like that, but I haven't really. I, I try. I, I learned a little bit about it. I haven't gotten too much into it, but yeah. Use something in the class method. Um, beautiful. Thank you, Ally Post. That's gonna work great. Yeah, that's gonna work great. Um, <laughs> that's not it, Herm's code. But as you can see, so as you can see, hunger is not decreasing. Why is that? Or it, hunger is not increasing. Why is the hunger not increasing? And so, uh, 
I wrote a lot of code, but what it comes down to is this tick function, this tick function says this dot, right? It says this dot hunger increased by one, and this dot is dead equals true if the hunger is greater than hunger, uh, one, right? So we're calling, we are calling the tick function. Every two seconds, we're calling that tick function. And every two seconds, we're also logging the current hunger value. So why is the hunger value not going up? It's because this tick function is being called with a different this value, right? We want this to be the player. What did I just do? We want, whenever we call this function, this should be the player, right? It should be this, so that way we can have the latest value. However, you can see how I passed this in here. I just passed it the function directly. And set interval, when given a function, will call it in a different context. So it's going to have a different this value, which is why when we use an arrow function instead, which has, um, well, is this even right? <laughs> Um, because it maintains lexical this, I guess technically, technically I could have used a function here and it would have the same effect. So this is not a good example, but, um, the, the example that Ally mentioned, we're going to show, <laughs> but now that I've now, instead of just passing that function to set interval, I've wrapped it in a function and it should have the right, this value, which, which is not, ex not at all ex explaining my point because, um, yeah, so now the hunger is actually increasing, but that's not explaining my point because we didn't use an arrow function, but, um, yeah. And so, uh, well, technically with an arrow function, the, this keyword here, if we were to log this is the, this of the surrounding code, um, but I like what Ally mentioned earlier. Yeah, th this works though. And the reason it works is because when this function is invoked, it's invoked in the context of player one. But what I liked earlier is, do I still have that on my, um, no, I don't. Yeah, and that's kind of what I want to show is uh, iterating and trying to use the context like this. Um, okay, so in our inventory, we have uh, nightmare fuel. <laughs> um, and um, it has a damage per tick value of um, uh, 10. So on every tick, if you have nightmare fuel in your inventory, your hunger is going to be decreased by 10. Something like this. I think we'll get there. <laughs> um, no, value. Damage. No, this has a value. And then damage per tick. Oh, no, no, no. I think it's the opposite. In our inventory, we have some bread. <laughs> and the current value is 100. And on each tick, that the, the value of the bread is going to decrease by 10. How about that? I like that. That's what, we, that's what we mean. So, and this makes sense, right? You have bread in your inventory and that bread's going to go old. So on every tick, the value of that bread should be decreased. This is the one. This is the one. <laughs> So what we need to do is uh, on every tick, we need to iterate over our inventory. Uh, so we'll do for each. And first, we're going to do it with a function. Uh, decrease. That gets the item. Staleness. Yes. <laughs> so um, here, here we go. So we have for each. This is going to be called on each inventory item. And what we want to do, right, is we want to say item.value minus equal this dot damage per tick, right? So uh, we need to iterate through our inventory. And this on each tick needs to be decremented by 10, right? It needs to go down to 90 and then 80 and then et cetera. So um, 
We're, we're doing that here. Now, this is where arrow functions come into play because we want this to be the same this as the outside, right? As outside the for each. We want this and this to be the same, but when you introduce the function keyword, they're not the same. I think we've, we've made it there, everyone. <laughs> we've, this, this is the example that all, all, forget all of the other code. This is what I wanted to show. We don't really even have to worry about hunger at this point. What we care about is the inventory. Um, okay, so the game is ticking. That's great. And I'm gonna use an arrow function here just because my linter prefers it. This arrow function doesn't matter as much. Also, this arrow function doesn't matter as much. I'm gonna show you where arrow functions matter. Um, current inventory. Inventory. All right, so we're gonna log the inventory when the game starts. Oh wow, our hunger went way up. Boom! Instant error. <laughs> so the moment we tried to game tick, we get this error, cannot read property damage per tick of undefined. And this this is why we, this is, I wrote a lot of code, but this is the, the, the example I wanted to get to. This is why we use arrow functions. So when you create an, when you create a new function, Inside of that function, the this keyword is potentially different. It, it depends on where that function is called, right? And so before arrow functions, the way that we would fix this is, so we, we know that, that like this code is working, right? Out, outside the this keyword is the right thing. So what we would do is we'd create a variable. So we'll say um, that equals this or you sometimes see people say like self equals this. But basically what we're doing is we're creating a variable to hold on to the this value outside of the function, right? And now inside the function, we can use that. And because that points to this, this should not give us an error and the, the, the inventory should be modified uh, correctly, right? So look at that. Um, the value of that bread is decreasing by 10 every second, right? Beautiful. Now. JavaScript programmers got tired of doing this, right? So, and basically what we're doing, like Laconic has just mentioned, we are referencing the, the scope outside of this function here, right? We're referencing this, which is technically the instance of the player. And we do, we've done that by putting it in a variable, right? Now, now, uh, JavaScript developers have gotten tired of this, because you do, you do this everywhere. You'd have to do this everywhere. <laughs> No, th this equals that. People do that all over the place. Um, I Back in the day, I used to use uh, self. That's my preferred one. It's a little less cheeky than uh, this equals that. You could also use bind. Yeah, that's where like call, apply, and bind potentially come into play. But if I use, uh, I'm calling it self, it's going to work in the same way. Yeah. Um, but also an another way to fix this <laughs> is to uh, say, gra grab this function and then bind it. Uh, Bob with the $10. Thank you very much. Um, let me, let me read what you said. I don't think there is another pro streamer that programs Minecraft just to answer a question from chat. <laughs> Punch trees. You're so positive and actually trying to help loving the stream. Well, thanks for being here, Bob. I appreciate you. Um, oh, uh, Ruby uses self for that as well. Yeah. So you, you could literally call it anything you want. You could, uh, whatever. But the main thing is we're capturing the outside this, right? We're capturing this outside the function, and then we can use um, whatever right here. Uh, whatever. You can call it whatever you want. Whatever. It, sh it should still work. Context. <laughs> In the JavaScript world, you either see this, or you, you see that, or you see self. Now, what if I didn't want to do this? Another way is to use the bind mechanism. Um, the bind mechanism returns a new instance of the function that has the specified context. So what I can do is, so you see that I've, I've wrapped this function in parentheses. Now I can say dot bind and pass in this right here. And so because this code runs at the same level as this code, Right here, this is what we expect it to be. And so basically what we're doing is we're saying, take that function and make the this inside of the function, the this that's outside the function. And this should work in the same way. And now we can actually use the this keyword. Um, so let's see it. 100, 90, 80, 70, et cetera. Beautiful. So we could use bind. Um, basically what we're, the, the, the main mechanism and the, the main reason we're trying to do all of this is because we want to control what the this value is inside of the function, right? Now, 
no, 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 no. This is where arrow functions come into play. Because they have lexical scoping, and what lexical scoping means is uh, use the scope of the code that surrounds it. So now that I've turned this into an arrow function, the this keyword automatically references the this that's outside the function, right? Yeah, you, you could you could have binded it uh, to anything you wanted to. Yeah, you have you could set that this value to be whatever you wanted. I set this to be this of the outside, which is basically what an arrow function is doing. So now that I've changed this to an arrow function, this keyword is going to work because arrow functions have lexical scoping, meaning they don't have their own this keyword. When you use an arrow function, whatever this is outside of the function is going to be the same inside of the function, right? And so now. The code is a bit simpler, and when I run it, it should work the way I expect it to, just like that. <laughs> and so that, that's one of the major benefits of arrow functions is lexical scoping. This inside of an arrow function is the same as this outside of an arrow function. Um, now, there are, there are implications of that. Arrow functions cannot be bound like a regular function. So uh, I, you cannot change the this inside of an arrow function. If, if I try to wrap this, Another someone else subscribed and I didn't see it. I, I appreciate you. I don't know why this is happening, but um, uh, Hajil, thank you very much for that three three month Twitch Prime sub. Um, but if if I tried to bind this like I did the other one, like bind this here, you you can't. You cannot bind um, an arrow function. Let's see what let's see what error I get. I don't even get an error. Like if I tried to bind this to like null. Nothing happens. Yeah, I just I cannot bind that function. Um, so that that's one of the uh, implications of using arrow functions is you cannot bind them. That basically the this is always lexical. You can't change the this value. Um, the other thing about an arrow function is you can't create an instance of it. So uh, right now I'm using the class keyword for this con it to for the player and it has a constructor, but Ultimately, uh, this code is the exact same as a, a constructor function. So if I would have written a function called player that does this, in JavaScript, these two are, for the most part, the same. Um, why am I describing this? Oh, because creating an instance. <laughs> um, but because I've used the function keyword, that would still actually allow me to do this down here, new player. With arrow functions, like if I were to turn this into a const player equals an arrow function like this, I cannot create an instance of this because it's an arrow function. So th there, are, there are other implications. You can't change the this value. You can't create an instance of it, but it has lexical scoping, which is nice. Oh, yeah, you can't ac access the arguments keyword. That's another good one. So uh, in regular functions, um, I, I believe this would qualify. Um, you get access to this magic keyword called arguments. And that is every argument that got passed into the function. Um, so you can see arguments is uh, an array-like thing that is all the arguments that got passed in. However, arrow functions don't have that. If I were to try to do this in here, I would get in uh, arguments is not defined. So there is no variable called arguments in here. So if I try to do this. Uh... Oh, 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 actually, <laughs> because I'm inside of, so remember, we have lexical scoping arguments is technically the arguments that were passed into this function. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's not a regular array, but uh, you'll notice that arguments is not this. If I really wanted something that was arguments, that's where I would use the spread arc, uh, spread operator, like args, uh, which basically takes all of the, the arguments passed into this function, puts them into an array, and then that can be used in a similar way. Oh, we're, we're getting into a lot more like newer features of, of JavaScript, but. Arrow functions are special. This is the main use case for an arrow function. Now, if you've looked at a lot of recent JavaScript code, you see that people are using arrow functions regardless of if they even care about the this keyword, right? You might, you'll probably see arrow functions all over the place and you won't even see the this keyword. This is really just hipster JavaScript. People, people like that they don't have to type the function keyword. Um, it's a bit more predictable because if for whatever reason they do decide to use the this keyword, they can know what the this keyword is going to be. But I, I will say that the arrow, arrow functions are highly overused um, in JavaScript these days just because people like the way they look. And hey, uh, Gold Zulu, thank you very much for that subscription. Oh yeah, uh, and there, there, there are more implications of arrow functions. You technically, if you only have one argument or one parameter, you don't need the parentheses and it works in the same way. 
Um, th that's why this, the, the, these arrow functions can be confusing to beginners because there are a lot of different ways to write them. If there are no arguments, you can write empty parentheses. If there's one argument, you can do it like that. If you have multiple, you have to wrap them in parentheses and do it like that. And then the other thing is like implicit return. Uh, th there, there's actually a bunch of other <laughs> implications of arrow functions, but I will say, uh, back to your, to your question, which was, um, I don't understand how it makes them simpler. That's the main reason. Now, I think uh, whether or not they make them more readable is just a matter of opinion. Yeah. Is it bad to use arrow functions? It's just a matter of opinion. Like, you see a lot of people doing this. Like, um, if we go back to that code that I wrote earlier. If we look at this code that I wrote earlier, which was a get weather function. Um, nowadays, you might actually see people write it like this. You might actually see them um, say const get weather equals an arrow function. And for all intents and purposes, these two are the same. Like, it, it, at least for now, we haven't actually written the code inside of it, but for the most part, they're not using the this keyword. Um, they, It's not using any other benefit of an arrow function other than the fact that it's it's less verbose um and, and, and honestly this is a bit like really it's actually more equivalent to this an, an anonymous function uh with the function keyword because there are differences between a function expression versus a function declaration um regardless i could have written it any one of these ways and at the end of the day because i'm just calling the function like this they're all the same they're all the same <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, Ramabato. All right, I have to go though. I appreciate you all. Um, yeah, so the, the inside of the function, if I were using the this keyword, it would it would be different. But for a function like this, I'm probably not going to use the this keyword. It's going to call an API. It's not inside of a class. Yeah, I'm not the same. <laughs> I got rid of my hair. <laughs> um, okay. This is great. Hopefully that answered your question, John. I realize we, we got a little bit convoluted there. We we're talking about a bunch of like, honestly, you can ignore all of the functions except for this one. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll write the old code here too, uh, just so you can see an example. Oh, in terms of availability, sure, sure. Because inside of the arrow function, this is technically the global scope, right? Um, Cool. So that's the old way. This is the new way. Uh, new is a relative term. Uh, term. Uh, this has <laughs> been in JavaScript since 2015. Five years. Five years. And Fahad, thank you very much for that subscription. Um, Alipost says, with arrow functions, you also kind of know that you don't rely on the function as an object itself. Yeah. You basically just don't have to worry about a lot of things if you use arrow functions. Um, and... We see this a lot in React, well, in, in older React, because in older React, what, like a year ago, everything, most everything was written with class-based components. And with class components, you would have methods, um, and the, this value would change, and so you'd have to bind that manually. Um, but if you wrote everything as arrow functions, you wouldn't run into that. Nowadays, with functional components and hooks, you don't really have to worry about that in React as much anymore. But I don't know. It's a JavaScript thing. Um, all right. Are there any, like simple questions I can answer really quick before I go. Is it possible to make a document component used for multiple documents that you can switch between document via view links? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Yeah, and they're always anonymous. You cannot have a named arrow function. It's always anonymous. You can put an arrow function in a variable, but that doesn't make it named. That's a variable with a function inside of it. And Dennis, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Um, I need to download a div as an image. How can I do that? Render it to a canvas. If you search for like HTML to canvas and then canvas to image, you could probably figure something out. Uh, except for await, do async functions have any different behavior than normal functions? It's a great question, Infi, and I think it's a leading question because I, I feel like you would know the answer to this. But uh, that's one thing I didn't mention earlier um, is that whenever you put the, um, let's see if I can, let's get in there. No, it's not it. What did I call that folder? 
when to use async await. I'll make a clarification, or a, a uh, not a clarification, but a, uh, a something that you might not realize. When you put the async keyword on a function, that function automatically returns a promise, regardless of if it has the await keyword. So you could actually do something like this. So async function get name, and then just return CJ. So this function does not have the await keyword anywhere, but this is still valid code. However, because I have the async keyword on there, this is basically just a function that resolves a promise to the string CJ. So later on, if I call get name, I still technically have to do dot then um, to get access to that. Yeah, and you don't need to you don't need to put new promise. Nope, that's one of the beautiful things about it, uh, is you literally just put the async keyword, and now this is a function that returns a promise. It, basically, this is equivalent to writing a function without the async keyword that does uh, promise dot resolve like that. These two are are functionally equivalent. Um, and that's actually really nice because um, you might find yourself writing like a, a caching function where you do have some increase asynchronous code down here that does like, uh, it calls things that return a promise, sets them in the cache, but right above that, you potentially need to check the cache. And um, the read from the cache might not be asynchronous. And so if there is a value in the cache, you just return it. You don't have to wrap it in a promise. You just return it, and that's the exact same as if you were to return it afterward. Afterwards, cool. I think that was your question, Mfi, right? Um, I don't know. I gotta go. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging out with me. Thanks for the supports, <laughs> including uh, Gray Hat, Gray Hat Yash for that Twitch Prime sub. Much appreciated. Uh, what's the extension below the Docker? Oh, we on another hype train. <laughs> well, are we ending a hype train? Hype train. All right, we'll stick around. <laughs> I think I'll play chess. We'll play chess during the hype train. Um, uh, somebody asked, what is the icon below Docker? What is that? SQL Server. Yeah, you can you can uh, browse SQL servers with that. The next, next stream is planned for um, next Friday. Um... Oh, did, did not mean to do that. <laughs> and thank you very much. I waited for the 100 bits. I'm going to push all this code up. And thank you, Andrew, for the 255 bits. Did someone say hype train? <laughs> um... Cool. So if you go to here, um, you can see all, all of the codes that I that I wrote today. You can see examples of. Um, just train. Oh, what's up, Fantasy Teapot? I cut my hair. I cut it off. There's actually, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of green, a little bit of green right there. That's about it. Um, but yeah, all the code I wrote today is here. We have Y arrow functions, when to use async await, all that good stuff. Um, check, check it out. Uh, there's, um, there are emotes, not emo, there, are em there are literal emoji. These are Unicode, these are Unicode values that are, that are chess, chess things. All right. Um. Does anyone want to play me in chess? Or should I just choose a random blitz game? How much is left on the hype train? Three minutes. We're going to do a five minute game against a random person. Oh, Katoli, you want to play? All right. I want to play with Katoli. I'll, I'll DM you the link. Uh, we're going to do uh, real time. Five minutes per side with five... Um, Second increment. And thank you, 246, for the 10 bits. Oh, you got an automaton? Nice. Nice. Uh, let's go. And Katoli says, I'm rusty. That's fine. I am too. I mean, I'm just not rusty. I'm just not that good. Um, I've been watching YouTube videos on uh, 
how to play chess, <laughs> like how to play chess better, how to have actual strategy and such. Um, there you go, Cadoli. Do you have a light chess account? I, I sent it to you on Discord. Well, somebody joined. <laughs> Their name is Katoli, so I assume it's them. And Katoli gets to go first. I am black. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I learned um, is uh, opening principles. <laughs> you hate to s I'm probably going to lose. Probably going to lose. Okay, so uh, my pawn is under attack by the knight. I should protect it. Um, I think I'm going to go this. Wait. No, 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 no. Go on this route. I'm going to protect my pawn like so. Uh, this is this is not good. This is like a really weird opening. I feel like I'm really close to like a four, four move checkmate or something like that. Uh, I'm going to attack his pawn with my, with my horsey, with my knight. It's pronounced Lichess. Did I not say that? Um, and now <laughs> he's he's threatening. He's threatening my knight. Um, and I, in turn, am going to uh, get out of harm's way. F. Yeah. Um, but what I learned about opening principles are basically you want to develop your pieces. Like basically, you, you what I just did is bad. The fact that I had to move the same piece twice that's bad. And now now it's under attack again. I'm moving it for a third time. This is very bad. Very very bad. Um, I might just honestly have to like sacrifice it um, so that I can develop my other pieces. Uh, I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna attack attack. His pawns. <laughs> oh, what's up, Dot Slash? Who used to be Pwn Repeat? Very cool. Um, but you, you want to, you basically, you want to get all of your pieces into positions of um, uh, where, where they can be useful, right? All your pieces. So, kill that. Now, if he attacks, we're trading queens. I don't even care. We're gonna trade queens. <laughs> now, um, I'm actually gonna do a little bit. Uh, we're going. We're going. It's it's, it's five, five. We're going. We're going this way. I knew you would do that. I knew it. Um, but, but, what do I do now? I don't know. I gotta, I gotta get moving. <laughs> let's, let's go here. Surrender, surrender is what I do now. No, 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 no. Um. Yeah. Check. <laughs> uh. Dang. I'm in I'm in a bad spot all around. I'm just in a really bad spot. Uh, we're going here. Never give up. <laughs> Protect my horse with a pawn. Um, it was already under attack though. Um, cool. Um, dead. The other thing I learned is that if you have rooks, you should always put them on open files. So like, so that they basically they can attack in this direction. So it would be a good move for me to um, bring my rook here so that it's attacking along that entire uh, thing. I am very noob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I'm playing chess because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I want to get better. Um. There we go. New badge? What? Who got a new badge? And thank you all for the supports. Appreciate you. What kind of badge? Oh, what, what badge are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um. All right. I feel like... I can't do very much. Uh, chat badge? Oh, oh, like a bits badge. 
Nice. Nice. Um... Going in. <laughs> nice. Nice badges, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you for your support. <laughs> QD5 seems good. Oh, what I just did? You like my move? <laughs> um, here. The other thing you're supposed to do in opening strategy is protect your king. I did not have a chance to protect my king. I was being attacked very early on. Oh, uh, I, I built the I built this custom. If you do exclamation mark FAQ, you can see it. What's up, Milky Dev? Yeah, I got a haircut. Um. Where can I go with this? I only have three minutes and 20 seconds left. I could attack his knight. He's probably going to take it out. Then I can move there for a check. Um, and then I kind of have my rooks to help me out. Um, can I? T I can't take a pawn right now, can I? I'm going to do this. That's my move. <laughs> Queen to e4. Oh, that would have been, yeah, instead of my pawn, that would have been a good move. Yeah. I don't know why I did that. I think I know why I did that. <laughs> Great. Great work, everyone. Um... Sick. <laughs> Look at how much power that queen has. Dot slash, thank you for the 200 bits. <laughs> good job with the chess. Let me read your message. Um, good job with the chess. I watched some past streams after my homework and it has been the highlight of my day. I'm trying my best. <laughs> queen for me. Yeah, I should, should we exchange queens? The thing is, I'm... I'm not in a good spot. I'm really not in a good spot right now. I kind of need to protect my pieces. Um, something like this. At least try. <laughs> Stop it, Stoja. Like, I'm trying, I am trying my best. I just, I'm not very good. <laughs> it's not like I'm throwing the game. I just have, I just not very, I, like, I have a general idea of how chess works. <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> I think this is good. So the qu his his queen is under attack. Um, he has to either yeah. So he has he had to move his king queen. Um, I'm gonna do maybe what what can I do? <sighs> kind of want to move it somewhere where it is. Um, I want I want my rook to help out right. So maybe take the free pawn. There is no, where's the free pawn? Oh, this one? Oh, that's beautiful. That's a great, oh, no, yeah. Check. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I had, to, I had to look for it. I had to look for it. I 
I've never tried coding chess. No, I haven't. That's a good play, too. Um... I wish I had my brown square bishop. That'd be really nice about right now. Yeah, I'm gonna protect my bishop again. I'm going back over here. Queen e5, keep up the attack. Well, I, I don't really want to trade queens. It's kind of like all I've got right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm following a bad... I'm following no strategy. I'm following no strategy. <laughs> It's not a bad strategy, it's no strategy. There's a difference. Okay. Good stuff. Um Oh, I got I gotta go. I gotta <laughs> I'm running out of time. <laughs> no, don't move it. No, I'm moving it. He's gonna he might he might check me and then um I'll move here. He might try to take that, I'll take him. Um doing my best. <laughs> Wait, did you totally already say GG? Thank you. I'm back. Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime reason. <sighs> Trade fast. Okay. Um, how? how what, what do I do? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was the move. That was the move to make. Um, <laughs> I only have 18 seconds left. I have to figure out what I'm going to do, like, immediately. Immediately, I need to know what I'm going to do. Well, check, my friend. Uh, Panzer is a St. Bernard. Check. 17 seconds left. <laughs> um. Oh, I can't. I can't put him in check. Um. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> um. I'm out of time. I lost. Good game. I die. Die is what I do. Cool. All right. Great work, everyone. I got to go on that very, very sad note and bad chess game. I got to go. I tried. I tried my best. I, I need to play more. I've got a couple of private games going. Uh, for the for all you chess people out there, you can you can analyze my games really quick. I'll show you this one. This one's, This is a game against Razor 1. Um, I think it's my move. And I think I'm 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 planning something over here. Like I could I could attack his um his queen right now. I gotta do something else to like protect it. That's that game. Um Luis I've been playing for a few days now. Um and it's their move. I'm on my way 
I think. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got most of my pieces still. Uh, and then another game I'm playing against, D. Holtzman. They, I, yeah, they haven't moved yet. So, when I have more time to think about it, I'm a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, it was a good game. Thank you, Katoli. All right, we're, I'm going to go. We're going to do a raid. So, um, join us in the raid. Yeah, uh, it's basically it's a correspondence game. So I, I, we, we each do a move whenever we have the time. Uh, and if if you all want to join me, or if you want to um, play me in chess, feel free to send me an invite. Um, on light chess, you can just you can start an infinite game or a seven day game, and then we can just play one move every other day or something like that. Yeah, we're gonna raid. If you are a sub, this is your raid message. Uh, that one. Uh, and if you are not a sub, this is your raid message. Yeah, thank you, Stojan. I appreciate you. Thanks for the laugh. Thanks for being here. Um, if you're not a sub, that's your raid message. I don't know where we're going to go, but wherever we go, share the love. Drop a follow if you like what they're doing, all that good stuff. Next stream is planned for Friday. Um, it's not likely I'm going to be able to stream before that, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try my best. Uh, that's that's all I can give you. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. <laughs> oh, what timing with that, CJ. <laughs> oh, man. What timing? Perfect timing, CJ. Uh, <laughs> shall we do it again? <laughs> Welcome in, Raiders, from CJ Stream. Good to see you all. Thank you for trying. Look at all those wonderful emotes from Coding Garden. I appreciate that so much, CJ. Thank you so much. We are starting off the stream with Win of the Week. If you don't know what Win of the Week is, do exclamation point W-O-T-W in the chat. But if you're new to the stream, too, also check out this clip.